Welcome to another Big Bang. In today's sweet mm, and flavour-filled show, we'll be building a picture block to puzzle your friends. Don't talk with your mouth full. Also, we'll be chewing over the strange but true story of the sweet that lasts forever. And we'll be skirting the surf to find out the plain truth about these ballistic bombshells. But first, a trick. You really haven't got this, have you, Violet? I have to get this sweet to stand up on its side. Mm -hmm. I just have to be a bit gentler. Hang on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to put you out of your misery. The best way to get a sweet to stand up on its side is to spin it. What's That's what I was going to try next. Yeah, right. There it goes. Look, now, a spinning sweet wants to do two things. It wants to keep all its weight near the centre of the spin and it wants to minimise its contact with the table. And the best way for a spinning sweet to do this is by spinning on its side. Sweet. I've got a sweet trick for you as well. I call this trick cherry picking. The cherries are two red ping pong balls on the end of a green piece of string. Yeah. And they're attached to this piece of felt. And the idea is to get the cherries off the felt. All right, I reckon it's a trick. It's got something to do with that loop. All you do is take that loop, pass it I'll over the top and pull. show you how it's done pull. at the end of the programme. No, that's not It right. won't work. You need to put your arm through, I think. Feeling tired, Cynthia? Not surprising. You've had a long day. But Ernest's only just got up, and he's yawning too. It's simple. You don't yawn because you're tired. You yawn when you need a little extra oomph. Yawning refreshes the stale air in our lungs and roots an extra dose of blood to the brain. This prepares us for action and helps keep us alert when we're sleepy. Sometimes you yawn not because you need to, but because someone else is yawning. Watch out, Cynthia. That yawn of Ernest's is catching. Too late. Shared yawning brings groups together so they can work as a team. If you're really tired, yawning will help keep your brain working. But in the end, you'll fall asleep anyway. Sweet dreams. Hmm. Hey, cool eggs, Violet. Can I have one for my sandwich? Can't you read, Gareth? Those eggs have got my name on them. <laughs> they have, quite literally. Well, in that case, it'll have to be, um, maple syrup pilchard and kiwi fruit. My beautiful personalised eggs are dead easy to make. You start off with a brown hard-boiled egg. Then, with a paintbrush, carefully paint your design or name on it in rubber-based glue. I won't finish that because I've got one here that's already made. This one is dry and so it's transparent really, so you can't see it. Pop it into a glass and cover the egg with vinegar all the way up to the top. Now the vinegar will dissolve the eggshell, releasing little bubbles of carbon dioxide. When the egg's been in there for an hour and a quarter, it will look like this. The scum on the top is the outer layer of brown shell. Now, with a spoon, fish your scummy egg out of the vinegar and pop it in some clean water. That's just to wash it. This one has already been washed. You need to dry it off. At this stage, you can see the design is already quite clear. But to really make it stand out and to prettify the egg, we need to put it in food colouring. It only takes a few seconds for it to take. And carefully, without splashing, get it out and dry it off the excess colour. Now the final bit is the really fun bit. Remember the glue is still on the egg so you need to rub the glue off with your fingers. It'll all peel off like that and you have your beautiful designed egg. How are you getting on with your sandwich then Gareth? Well we didn't have any kiwi fruit so I had to eat the eggs. Depending on your point of view, we're either going to be flying very low or speedboating very high. Big, Big Bang, Bang Big, Big Stuff, Stuff presents, presents a, a boat that flies. Tradition.
traditional boats sit low in the water and can be quite slow and clumsy. That's because in order to make progress forward, they've got to push the water out of the way. And that can be really hard work, I can tell you. Since it's the water that slows a boat down, it should move faster if you lift it out of the water. Boats like these have holes designed to do just that. Move them quickly enough and the front starts to skim across the surface of the water. It's called planing. Take the planing idea to its extreme and what you end up with is this. A racing hydroplane. Now, I know it looks like a, a great plank of plywood with a very fast motor strapped to the back, but if you look underneath, you'll see two things. These are sponsons. They're sort of floats on the outside of the boat and in between, you've got a kind of tunnel. When the boat moves, air gets rammed into the tunnel and the air pressure resulting from that lifts the boat off the water. And when this thing is really going, the only points actually touching the water are the back of the boat and the propeller. Gareth, what are you waiting for? What? Oh. <laughs> Are you sure about this, Violet? Yeah, well, look at it this way. Because of the way they're built, hydroplanes only turn left. So, how hard can it be? Yeah, exactly. Good luck! Job. You've made a picture block with all our holiday photos. If you're going to make a picture block like I've done, it's worth remembering that it's a good idea to reinforce each hinge with a double layer of sticky tape so it's nice and strong. Look, it's Mount Rushmore. And uh, you don't have to use your own holiday pictures, of course. You Do you could, remember going to Jodrell Bank? You can cut out pictures from a magazine, or you could use geometric patterns. Copacabana. Oh, yes. Oh, or if you want, you could just leave it blank like a kind of uh, puzzle cube. Real? But it's worth remembering, if you are going to use pictures from a magazine, to oh. reinforce them on the back side with a piece of card, because the paper from a magazine is a little bit flimsy, really. Do you remember New York? No. Today's A Strange But True Story is about the invention of the world's first everlasting sweet, chewing gum. Over a hundred years ago in New York, a guy called Thomas Adams was looking for an alternative to rubber. He wanted something that was cheaper than rubber, but very important, it still had to be bouncy. Oh dear, what Thomas Adams didn't know about rubber would fill a book. In his rubbery quest, he came across something called chickle, the sap from the sapodilla tree. It was cheap, but still a long way from rubber. Zero burn Gosh 
Darn it! But then, a brilliant idea came over him. No, wait. A brilliant idea just came over me. I ain't gonna chew this baby no more. No! I'm gonna chew this stuff. Thomas Adams found oh. Chickle didn't dissolve. You could chew and chew and chew, and still it wouldn't disappear. Unfortunately, Chickle didn't have any flavour. In fact, it tasted a bit like a smelly welly. So that's chewability 10, flavour 0. Luckily, he soon discovered that Chickle absorbed flavours. All he had to do was pick a great flavour and he'd have invented the first everlasting chewy sweet. Pickle and onions? No. Um, ice cream and vinegar? No. Uh, ah, haddock! Haddock! No. Um, how about mint? Mint? No, it makes me think of, like, uh, roast lamb, you know, like Sunday dinners and uh, mint sauce. No, that's no good. Wait, I got it. My favourite thing is banana splits. That's it, a banana split. I'll start work straight away. Adams knew as little about flavours as he did about making rubber. Enter a man with a plan. But I like the idea of mint. And you might be? William Wrigley Jr., ma'am. One of the uh, Philadelphia Wrigleys. And lady, let me tell you, I am very keen on this minty, everlasting candy idea. Wrigley was a baking powder salesman. And he thought mint gum could be very big. To test out his theory, he decided to give it away free with his boxes of baking powder. Look! Meanwhile, poor old Thomas Adams never tasted success with his half-bitten flavour ideas and his name never made it to the Chewing Gum Hall of Fame. Wrigley's baking powder sold like hotcakes and incredibly, people were only buying it because of the free chewy stuff attached. They simply threw away the baking powder boxes. Wrigley soon realised that his free chewy stuff had a very bright future indeed. While poor old Thomas Adams was still stuck in his lab, Wrigley went on to make millions of dollars. Each year, Americans chew through enough chewing gum to reach 20 times around the world. And that's before it stretched. Strange. But true. <laughs> when did we go to Mars? Violet, I finally worked out a way of getting them ping pong balls off that bit of felt. Brute force! No, Gareth, you know, we're not allowed to play with chainsaws in the house. Oh, well, go on. Show us how it works, then. OK, if I show you how to make one, you'll then know how to unmake one. OK, yeah. You start with two bits of felt, yeah. exactly the same. They both have a slit either side of the middle mm -hmm. and a little slit in the bottom. OK. Now, sew those together. You can do that. Yeah, yeah, I'm good at sewing me. Up. And you've got your cage. Now you need to make your cherries. Your cherries are red ping pong balls. I've put a hole in them with a biro, and then you get some string and reinforce the end of the string with sellotape. It makes it nice and thick so you can push it right down and it'll hold secure. Hang on a minute, you've made this in two separate parts. I smell Oops, a rat. I just dropped my ping pong balls on the floor. Back in a sec. Right, this is the clever bit. You've got your two parts. And now you need to get your ping-pong balls on. The way you do this is take the middle section of the felt and push it through the slit at the bottom to make a loop. A loop that's big enough to pass the ping-pong ball cherries right through. Then you can straighten it out again. Done it, Gareth. Well, are you going to show me how to undo this or not? Uh, not. Do you get the feeling you've been stitched up? Oh, go on, Violet, show oh, us, please. Right, go on. Okay, what is it, yeah? Take this. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. Okay.